Hit it. Welcome to the Test Talks Podcast, the place to go to geek out on software testing. And now your host, whose mission is to help you succeed with test automation, Joe Colantonio. Hey, it's Joe, and welcome to the Test Guild Test Automation Podcast. Oops. Sorry, a little bit too early. If you haven't heard already in the previous episode, I gave you a sneak insight into what's coming up in the next few months. I am working on totally rebranding my blog podcast into one site and then releasing other podcasts around niche topics like performance testing and security testing. So Test Talks is going to become the Test Guild Test Automation Podcast, and Security Testing is going to be the Test Guild Security Testing Podcast, and Performance Testing is going to be the Test Guild Performance Testing Podcast. You get the idea. But just trying to prep you uh, so that you're not caught off guard. So if you've been listening for a long time, Test Talks is going to become Test Guild Automation Podcast. Just want to give you a heads up and get you kind of used to the idea before I actually do it. Today, though, we're going to talk about a new automation framework. So are you like me and you really like Cypress IO, but feel like it may be too developer centric for your testing team? Or do you still really want to use Selenium and Appium? You don't want to use a tool or solution that uses something else behind the scenes. You want to use what's the industry standard, but in a simpler, more straightforward way. If so, this episode is for you. We're going to be test talking all about the automation framework Oxygen with the co-founder of CloudBeat, Nahum Dimmer. So listen up and learn about another open source tool that might be the perfect fit for your automation efforts. Check it out. Test Talks is sponsored by the fantastic folks at Sauce Labs, the cloud-based automated testing platform that eliminates the need to maintain your own Selenium grid and test infrastructure. Try it for free today. Visit testtalks.com and click on the Sign Up Now link under the Homepage Sponsor section. You know, welcome to Test Talks. Hi, Joe. Thanks for inviting me. That's great to have you here. Today, I'd like to talk all about automation in general, but specifically about your Oxygen framework. But before we get into it, can you just tell us a bit more about yourself? Right. So I would start first with, uh, you know, thanks for doing a great job with uh, Test Talks. Uh, I think it's a great vehicle for QA engineers and developers to you know, get no better as the industry trends and uh, get no people and leaders and so on. So thank you very much again for inviting me. Um, so I will start with a little bit background of myself. Uh, so I, as my name probably hints, I'm Israel in Nahum. Uh, even so I was born in uh, Russian Georgia, moved to Israel when I was 15. As many Israeli entrepreneurs, uh, my uh, initial background in software started in the Israeli army. Uh, so I uh, started with building uh, one of the first intranet uh, platforms in the Israeli Air Force. And from there, I moved to uh, become a full-time software engineer in various um, uh, in- in- enterprises in Israel and uh, international companies. And uh, this was for my first six years or even more years of my career. So I haven't started as QA engineer, as a tester. I started as a software engineer. But then I, um, I felt I wanted to move, uh, move on to do something more um, meaningful in terms of you know, working with more with people and so on. So I moved to pre-sale. And this is how I get to QA because I, started to be, uh, I became a pre-sale manager at a company called Radview. So I was exposed to whole QA world, and uh, I was uh, helping companies to uh, use different QA tools, whether in test automation field or performance testing field. Uh, and I find this uh, uh, very ch- challenging and interesting because, you know, when you are a programmer, you just, you know, you write your code usually u- using the latest technologies, and you know your challenge is pretty much the same every day. Well, when you are a tester, your challenges are, are changing and actually you're working on different technologies. Sometimes you're testing very old-fashioned, outdated technologies, some, what, sometimes the latest one. And what I found, found also fascinating is that on one side, software engineering is so much innovative field. On the other side, many QA techniques of practicing are coming from, you know, from practices that we, we used to do 20 years ago. 
And I think one of the biggest challenges today is how we adjust to, you know, much faster pace of release, a software release cycle. Anyway, so this is how I started in QA and I have my consultancy business for the last 10 years. Again, mostly focused on performance and uh, automation testing. And uh, for the last four years, I'm part of a great initiative, which we call Oxygen, which I will tell in a moment. And we, we also have a startup company called CloudBeach, which, we, which produces tools to help QA engineers, testers, and developers to get to the next level with the testing. Awesome. So clearly, you have a lot of experience. Uh, you've been consulting for 10 years. So just curious to know over that 10-year span, you know, what's the state of automation you find yourself in today, and how has it changed from the past? Yeah, I, I can tell you when I started in uh, 2005, so just uh, automation uh, state was completely different than it is now. You know, if, if we take last 10 years, beginning of 10 years, which is roughly 2005, 2006 and seven, still I think market was dominant by mostly, uh, um, I call it uh, old fashioned tools like QTP. And I think still most tests uh, were manual. With a little bit automation, most automation I think was focused on UI. I don't remember any of my clients at least having API test automation, for example, or automated integration testing, very little unit testing. Um, but we still, if we go 10 years back, we're still talking about release cycles of a year or you know twice a year. Now, if we we'll take a look now, like last few years, I think release cycles have shortened to usually two-week cycles, right? Some companies release on a daily basis or even few day, a few times a day, right? Uh, so I see much more automation testing happening on, I think, you know, uh, as the testing pyramid has flipped. So I think there are, we see much more unit testing now, uh, which I personally consider as part of automation testing and uh, a lot of integration testing uh, happening today, especially in CICD oriented companies. I still think there is a lot of uh, UI testing and I don't think it's going to change. I still think UI testing is probably one of the best things to kind of see overly how the platform works. Uh, but I still think UI testing is still the biggest challenge to the own market. Because I think if you take like API testing or integration testing or unit testing, it's pretty much straightforward. While I still think most companies are struggling with getting up to speed with uh, UI testing. And I think we can elaborate it more in our conversation today. But, you know, there are so many frameworks, there are so many tools, um, you know, some tools which already exist in the market 10, 20 years, some newcomers. So on one side, there's a lot of choice uh, today and a lot of flexibility with, you know, almost industry standards like Selenium and Appium. On the other side, I think de facto uh, most companies are still struggling uh, to create a proper and stable test automation process, especially in, in, in UI field. Absolutely. And like you mentioned, there are a lot of frameworks out there. I have a post, I think I have 48 or 50 of them listed, and that's not even half of them. So I guess before we get into frameworks, uh, I, I guess Oxygen is a framework. So just tell us a little bit more about Oxygen, and then I'd like to break down why you, you thought there was a need for another framework. Right, right. So uh, just let me first to kind of give a ca categories to a framework today, because you're right, there are so many of them. Uh, but if we look at the, at the framework type, so we, we usually we have uh, classical unit testing frameworks like, you know, JUnit, TestNG, NUnit, MS Test, and so on. And we have some frameworks more oriented on UI testing, automation testing like Cypress. So it's interesting change, which I think uh, market evolves, uh, because I think like, you know, if we take 10 or 15 years back, I think we would typically find, you know, a classical unit testing frameworks. Uh, now, I think some frameworks are coming to solve purely test automation problem and not just coming for being uh, developer oriented frameworks. So um, with this in mind, basically what we felt that in today modern world, I think QA engineers kind of stuck in between, right? So there are plenty of frameworks which are developer-oriented. As I mentioned, JNU, Test Engine, and so on. Uh, there are probably three, four, even if not 10 frameworks per language, right? But those frameworks are very usually very difficult for QA engineers to work with because they're oriented on unit testing, they're oriented on developers. So trying to 
integrate with this framework's UI testing, particularly, and also API testing. Sometimes it's quite challenging, right? On the other side, there are f- frameworks and uh, we, which are much more QA oriented. I think Cypress is probably a good example. Even so, I think they're very well also suit developers. But I think Cypress, for example, is a good uh, piece of framework which helps also uh, automation test- testers or, or manual testers to start working with automation. But we felt like you know it's it's more developers oriented. We felt there must be a better way to uh, basically create a framework which, on one side, is simple. Uh, simple enough for even non-programmer background people uh, that you know, like manual testers. On the other side, it's powerful enough. So if you are more advanced tester or you are a programmer, then you can write more advanced tests, adding more layers to your automation, not just UI, adding API testing, database testing, and even IoT testing. And so we felt so there there is really either like frameworks which are just really simple and built for UI testing, but less suitable for you know, all inclusive integration testing, or there are real developer-oriented uh, framework, which are less suitable for UI and less suitable for classical uh, QA engineering. Uh, so we we saw there there is a gap, and we we wanted basically to help QA to move forward and adapt to uh, CI/CD processes to shift left. Uh, and so this is why we created Oxygen, uh, having in mind. Uh, different scope of users, developers, QA engineers, DevOps, and even uh, IT for uh, uh, for production monitoring. So this is how we, uh, you know, this is what we had in mind when we created Oxygen. Cool. So can you give, give an example of what you mean, how you made it all inclusive? Like, is, is there a different view from someone you consider, you know, someone starting fresh or someone that's a developer? Right. Good question. So, uh, what what we decided to do, we decided to divide Oxygen to two parts. So we decided to divide it to purely framework part, uh, w- which you can just, you know, take it as a framework. You can take your favorite uh, ID uh, uh, and, and use it. And another part, w- which we added on top of it, is uh, our own Oxygen ID, which allows actually for less skilled or, or less technical uh, people to be able to record tests uh, out of box, to be able to debug tests without need to write uh, compilation-based languages or be or needs to write a complex architecture, like in case if you just use Java or C Sharp or any other compilation-based languages. Um, so we, we decided to split it to two parts, and another decision we made is to use JavaScript. Um, because, you know, we, as I said, simplicity on one side. So simplicity, you don't really need a programming language. But then if you, if you don't use, if you, you go purely codeless, then you usually quite limited in certain level, especially if you have a large testing project which needs, which needs more than UI, you would be typically limited by uh, capabilities of codeless fr- uh, framework. So we decided to combine both. So we decided to combine some elements from codeless uh, uh, approach and some elements from coded, and we decided that the basis for our framework will be JavaScript because we believe this is one of the simplest programming language today and one of the most popular. Uh, so yeah, so this was our initial approach to split it to two parts, framework and ID on top of it, and use JavaScript uh, as a basis. So I guess one of my other questions was, how does this differ from like Selenium IDE? I know Selenium, you can port it out to different languages. You just mentioned this just uses JavaScript. Are you able to export the script out into any language binding, or is it just JavaScript? No. So uh, in in contrast with uh, Selenium ID, which is kind of recorder and and generator for other languages, so we build all-in-one, fully integrated solution. Um, So... You use uh, Oxygen ID to record the test and generates very simple JavaScript, which actually looks like KDT. Um, so if you don't know JavaScript, you can even even then you can start using straight away uh, our framework. But then you stay with it, so it, it's not an extension for you know just recorder for JUnit or or you know, MS test. It's standalone framework which you would use, and again it's. Uh, you know, we, we think it's very much suitable for companies or for uh, people who don't have any framework. It doesn't uh, supposed to, to replace existing frameworks. Like, you know, if you have JUnit framework and you're happy with it, then that's fine. So it's not extension on top of other frameworks. It's really just standalone framework, which gives you all in what you need in framework. 
So you didn't mention JUnit, but JUnit, I would think, is more unit level. So does this also, do developers actually use this for unit testing? Uh, no, uh, Oxygen at the moment, uh, is, uh, its purpose is not uh, to be used for unit testing, but you can combine it uh, alongside unit testing, classical unit testing frameworks uh, like Jasmine and JavaScript or other frameworks as well. Um, so you can combine them either if you are in JavaScript and obviously it's much easier for you to combine this framework uh, with others, or uh, if you are not in JavaScript, then you can combine it more on CI CD level. But this is not unit uh, unit testing framework, at least at the moment. Okay, so if I'm following along, so I would think Oxygen sounds to me more like you mentioned Cypress, and that it's like an all-in-one solution, and it's not it's not the same as Selenium ID, which is more like a helper tool where you can use it, but you can also export things and do more. In other, like this is an all-in-one solution, I guess is what I'm saying, all-inclusive. Yes, it's all-inclusive. And what's important to say is that we, because, again, uh, testing today is much more wider than unit test and UI test. So for us, it was very important to support more than just UI testing. So Oxygen, first of all, Oxygen is working, is fully compatible with Selenium and Appium. It's basically a wrapper framework. So we don't use any of our proprietary engine. Uh, like Cypress, uh, like Cypress do. So we just integrate with Selenium and Appium. But on top of it, you can actually we have models different. We have I think eight or nine models. So we, you you can also integrate in it API testing, for example. So we have dedicated model for REST API for SOAP uh, API testing. We have model for uh, database testing. We have model for SMS testing for example, for email testing and even IoT testing. So you can even connect your IoT device with serial port to Oxygen and actually create an integration testing where, for example, some customers, uh, they use Oxygen to simulate some actions on mobile device, and then they go to their IoT device, which operated by this mobile app, and they verify that whatever they did actually happened on, on physical IoT device. Um, so I think the key of Oxygen is UI and integration testing rather than unit testing. Wow. So it sounds like then uh, you could do f- like an end-to-end test almost. So you can do a setup in a, an API test, call it a UI, do some manipulation there, and then do something on the back end all in one test flow. Exactly. Exactly. The idea is exactly as you said, to allow fully end-to-end test, whatever it means. Uh, you know, if you involve SMSs, databases, IoT, whatever you use. Great. Now, once again, I, I, I always just keep going back to Cypress. I know Cypress does not use Selenium under the covers. You are using Selenium and Appium under the covers. Is there anything you're doing to help enhance that experience, like uh, built-in weights or anything that people struggle with with Selenium out of the box because it's just an API, they need to write all the scaffolding around it? Because you have the scaffolding around it now, are there any other features you have baked in to help overcome some of the, the uh, issues people face with Selenium and Appium? Very good point. So basically, we call oxygen selenium on pillows. And the reason why we, we call it this way is because, you know, working with pure selenium and appium is quite tough, right? So uh, what we added on top of it, we added different layer hooks, uh, which, for example, as you mentioned, we have automated uh, weights uh, for different conditions. We handled, uh, uh, for example, uh, what's called stale element in Selenium. So, if, for example, one, one element is covered by some invisible element or it's not visible at the moment. So we have some automatic handling for these situations. We have some automatic um, uh, handling for scrolling the page if your element is below the fold. Uh, we, For example, in mobile space in Appium, we have some special handling for reading SMSs on device, for switching to uh, flight mode, uh, to switching on and off network, to uh, doing OTP authentication and so on. So definitely there is um, quite a large or substantial amount of uh, add-ons uh, in Oxygen to help you overcome uh, typical issues with Selenium and Appium. Very cool. And I just keep going back to that scenario you gave of integration testing. Why do you feel integration testing is so important? Why did you bake it in? Because we saw, uh, again, coming through with consultancy background and seeing tens, if not hundreds of different projects over the last 15 years, one of big problems organizations have on top of just regular basic uh, like sanity and aggression testing and unit testing is being able to test application with all its components in some kind of staging environment. 
I saw this one of, of main failure points of many organizations. Uh, so it, you know, your application can perform brilliantly when you test it apart. But then when you put it together with some third-party integration and so on, especially when today uh, architecture of most of applications is quite complex, rely on many either internal or third-party services, and I'm even not mentioning microservices architecture. So there is a lot of failure on the integration part. And the thing is that many organizations approach integration like a kind of last-moment testing. So it's really frustrating when you almost want to go live and then you figure out that there are so many problems uh, in your integration environment. And uh, and many com- many organizations find it difficult actually to test it because there are so wide variety of different technologies involved in. And because of most frameworks don't give you all this coverage, so you just need to write a lot, a lot of code to do it. Uh, so this is why we decided to to improve this part and kind of focus on both UI testing and integration testing. Cool. And I guess another reason why you may have been using, going back to Selenium and Appium is, I think I saw a quick video demo and you're able to interact with more than just Chrome, where I think Cypress is just tied to Chrome right now. You're able to handle more than Chrome or do you just, uh, what, what browsers, I guess, do you support? We support every browser that Selenium and Appium supports. And I think it's, again, very good point because uh, you know, we need to separate, I think, today testing in pre- and post-merge, right? So I j- just, you know, to explain to our audience, so like pre-merge test means developers committed some code and there's some quick testing that needs to to be run to make sure that this commit makes sense, right, from, t- from quality perspective. Post-merge means that uh, developers' code is already in kind of master branch or some kind of branch where it's together with a lot of code. And now we can actually test it more towards integration, you know, adding more components and so on. Now, uh, the thing is that when, again, my my feeling is that one of the weakest points today in the organization is actually post-merging testing. And in post-merging testing, you want to test in on widest possible uh, variety of devices and browsers and infrastructure and so on. And this is where Selenium and Appium doing a great work, a great job, right? Because uh, Selenium app literally allows you to test uh, your, you know, your application on any device. It's so flexible, right? So you can use your local uh, infrastructure, so you can connect your local browsers or your local phones. You can use cloud providers uh, as well and get your either virtual device or physical devices anywhere in the cloud with fraction of price, uh, which would cost you just to buy all these devices. And I think all these capacities are coming with Selenium and Appium. And if you just take frameworks which are locked on particular device or or operating system or particular browser, you don't have this flexibility. And I think in post-merge testing, this flexibility is very important. And this is why we initially decided not to develop any of a proprietary engine. So we have only our recording engine, which is proprietary to Oxygen. Uh, but all playback is done fully on top of Selenium and Appium. So whatever you can connect to Selenium and, and Appium, you can actually run tests on using Oxygen. Yeah, I love this concept of pre and post. Uh, a lot of times people say, choose this tool or the other. I think you use the right tool at the right time for the right team at the right point in your pipeline. So that's a great, great point. Yeah. Um, so along those lines then, you know, Selenium, Appium are both open source. Is Oxygen open source? Is this a paid solution? How, how does this work? No, it's all open source, of course. We we felt that, you know, Selenium, Appium contributed so much to testing the world. So uh, we felt, you know, we, we, we almost must to make it open source as well. Uh, uh, because I think there is something great in, in having ability to adjust or contribute or extend tools. And I think if you just release something which is proprietary, makes it very hard for industry to adapt and very hard for industry to extend. Um, so we are big believers in open source and Oxygen is fully open source solution. There's no, you know, uh, asterisks or small letters, or anything like this. So one, one thing I, I always worry about with any sort of tool when it's open source, it's great that it's open source, but uh, how popular is it? How much uh, is um, is it being developed? Is like if, if I was to recommend this to someone, what are the, what's the likelihood that you know in a year or two it's still going to be around and you're going to be responsive to any bugs that they may find? Yeah, good point. Good point. 
So first of all, Oxygen is quite a mature project. It's already in development o- almost four years now. And it's used uh, over 400 companies worldwide. Unfortunately, it still doesn't have a big contribution community because we actually, we never invested in promoting it and making it publicly kind of talking about it. So we do it now for the last half a year. Uh, you know, we were f- primarily focused on the Israeli market because our operations, commercial operations were in the Israeli market. But um, I think in the last half year, we really got a boost for oxygen also worldwide. And the good thing, I think it's a very, very uh, uh, good question, you know, what was the perspective for the next few years? Because there are many frameworks which just disappeared over time. Uh, but again, we, we, we are a commercial organization. So we, CloudBit uh, is, uh, is a quite established startup which is doing other things in Oxygen. So we have our uh, test management platform, which is a SaaS-based and it's commercial. So we have our funds coming from our commercial activities to sponsor and fund Oxygen. As I said, I would love to see more contributors, of course, and uh, not just because you know it, it can ease on us, but it, it can also, I think, bring the variety of uh, perspectives and uh, extend uh, as a framework from technology perspective. But in terms of you know uh, supporting it, I think it has a good uh, backbone in in, uh, you know, in what we do in CloudBit. But again, Oxygen is not premium product; it's fully open source product. There is no product which kind of Oxygen Plus. Yeah. So. Just to clarify, because once again, I'm going to this back to the Cypress model. They have like, it's not really open source, it's freemium. Uh, but to run in parallel or do certain things that are critical, you need to pay for it. So is there anything, gutches like that with, with Oxygen, like you can't run in parallel unless you pay for it, or you can't get reporting unless you pay for it? No, actually, no. We have both. We have built-in parallel testing, okay? So all you need, we have examples in our documentation, is to configure a simple JSON file, and you can run as many product tests as you like. You already have built-in integration with most of cloud providers. So if you want to run it on uh, cloud uh, infrastructure, you are free to go ahead. I think we have, if I'm understanding, four or five different reporting engines, and you can extend it. Again, it's open source, so you have HTML reporting, you have GA unit XML reporting, you have Excel reporting. Uh, and so on. I think there are two or three more reporting uh, um, engines uh, built in. So there is really nothing which you can't do uh, with Oxygen. The, one, uh, the thing is that we, 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 I mean, the direction we are going because the cloud bit uh, has the solutions to manage testing cloud. So what we're going to do is to integrate Oxygen optionally for people who want to be able to store tests in cloud. Okay. So basically, today, Oxygen is fully a local solution, okay? So your, your scripts are just local files. Uh, you know, you, of course, can commit it to your Git or, or to whatever source control you use. You can run it either locally from developer or tester machine. You can run it from CI, CD. So again, there is no limitations there at all. We do see that uh, some of our users are asking us to have some kind of more uh, Postman model. Uh, where you can store your test in cloud and be able basically to cooperate with the teams. So you say you are a team of 10 or five or two testers, doesn't matter, and you want to share the same code. And on one side, on the other side, not, uh, you know, with more straightforward models in Git. So just, you know, to be able to change something without need to commit it and to, you know, do kind of uh, pull requests and so on. So uh, I do believe later on this year, Oxygen will be integrated with a uh, with a, a free tier of CloudBit where you'll be able to store the tests. But again, it's just integration the same way I would integrate Oxygen with Jira or any other product. So, uh, so Oxygen itself, there are no limitations, no premium model. Everything you can do there, you can do in any other tools we build. Cool. So say someone loves Oxygen. They're like, the company that made this are insanely cool. Now, what else does CloudBeat then have for them if they want to check out some other solutions that they might pay for? Right. So basic CloudBeat test uh, allows you to solve what I call it last mile problem, right? So Oxygen helps you to solve first mile problem. What do I mean by first mile problem? I mean that it allows you to create tests, right? So without creating tests, you can't run a proper large-scale test automation process. So this is a last mile problem. 
What we, other things we do in CloudBit is help you solve last mile problem. What is the last mile problem? Is when you have a lot of tests, hundreds, thousands of tests, and doesn't matter if you have unit tests or automation tests, integration tests, any kind of automation testing, okay, not manual testing. So your last prime mile problem will be A, how you know, how you trace the scope of tests, what you have, right? And how you map them to your requirements, okay? B, how you manage your test lab, okay? So how you run all this amount of tests on variety of devices, how you build your test suits, how you switch between different environments. So today, if you take, say, uh, you know, programming-based uh, frameworks, like as an example, JUnit, it really doesn't matter. Uh, all frameworks as, in this sense are the same. And you will end up doing a lot of configuration in files, right? So you would typically hard-code user uh, device IDs, you will hard code environment variables in files and so on. And then in CI CD environment, many times you will fail just because somebody overtook your device or something has changed in the environment, or you need to ch- change your test suite and suddenly QA engineer needs an access to DevOps environment and so on. So we take this pain out with Cloud B test. We in Cloud B test, we allow to centralize all the testing part. So basically, you upload all your tests. And in this sense, it doesn't matter if it's Oxygen test or JUnit test. So CloudBit at the moment work with Java and JavaScript technologies. And later on, we'll work also with .NET and Python and other technologies. But the idea is that for, it's centralizing. It's kind of quality hub for your DevOps-oriented uh, or, uh, organization. So you bring all your tests into CloudBit. And then CloudBit allows you to set up your test environment. You can connect either different uh, cloud providers, or you can bring your local infrastructure, you can manage your test suite centrally. And of course, you can, or most important, you can under why your tests are failing, if it's due to flackiness, or is it due due to uh, actually defects that you uncovered, or maybe due to environment problems. You can store all the results in one central place, which is very powerful because you can see trends, you can do root cause analysis, uh, and the idea is further down the road where we are going is to provide you also kind of business intelligence and artificial intelligence or what's the impact on your business of test failure. So this is a kind of other solutions or other solutions we are working at and we have also at the moment. Okay, now before we go, is there one piece of actionable advice you can give someone to help improve their automation testing efforts? Let's know the best way to find, contact you or get a hold of Oxygen. Yeah, I think, uh, well, in terms of contacts, it's best just to go to oxygenhq.org and you can download Oxygen and Oxygen ID there. It works on any uh, operating system. And I do recommend you to also look at our documentation. Also, if you're just starting your testing career, I think there is a lot of information there to help you get started with Selenium and Appium and, of course, with Oxygen and Oxygen ID. Uh, so this is on purely just, you know, how you get started with it. My general recommendation to testers is just open your eyes and, you know, be aware of testing more than just UI, okay? I really encourage you to be more technical, to look wider than just the scope of testing you typically give it. Uh, because from my perspective, we look 10 years ahead. then you know, every tester will have to really understand well a technological background of the application he's testing. So I think my biggest recommendation is, and I see a lot of testers have this concern, is just don't be afraid to be technical. Go ahead, explore, you know, different types of testing. If you want to start, you know, small, just take, you know, Oxygen, take Postman, take Cypress, or take anything which is, you know, uh, quite a smooth start for you. And then just go wider, be more technical, and help organization to test most difficult aspects, which usually hidden behind the scenes in the kind of integration testing. Thank you, Nahum, for your oxygen automation awesomeness. For links to everything of value we covered in this episode, head on over to testtalks.com forward slash 257. And while you're there, make sure to click on that sign up for a free trial link under the exclusive sponsor section to learn all about Sauce Labs awesome products and services. So that's it for this episode of Test Talks. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed with creating automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers. 
Thanks for listening to the Test Talks podcast. Head on over to www.testtalks.com for full show notes, amazing blog articles, and other automation awesomeness.